Well guys, we are August 4th. We're well underway now in this Every Bit Counts Challenge. And we're starting off this second video outside. We are in harvesting again when it comes to fruit. We have more blueberries to harvest and we do have blackberries that are starting. So we're not gonna be doing those today because it's feeling like 39 today and a risk of extreme thunderstorms, which we're not gonna gamble by going all the way to the back to collect those. So that might be tomorrow. But today we're gonna to harvest our blueberries and get them into the freezer because every little bit does count. And the blueberries have been producing incredibly this year. We've never gotten so many blueberries from our plants. And honestly, we're not complaining because we are big fruit eaters around here. Well, that's probably about three cups, maybe four. It might be a liter. Nice little harvest. We've been getting these kind of every other day, which is fantastic, but it's starting to drip. I'm not sure if you can see it. And if we wait long enough, I'm sure you're going to hear this thunder. So I'm darn glad that I didn't go to the back for the blackberries, but that will be coming tomorrow. But one thing we're going to quickly talk about here as we've been picking the blueberries is the volunteer potatoes. It's becoming a problem and I think this week we should harvest them and maybe we'll make them into some lamb stew. Hear it? It's coming. So you can see down this end the potatoes are really thick and they're crowding out our blueberries really badly. They need to come out of here. This was an accidental thing. We dumped some buckets that we grew some potatoes in and obviously missed a few of those little tiny ones or assumed they weren't going to survive the winter. And now, three years later, we keep pulling them out of the blueberries. But this year, they are excessive, along with the horseradish. So we're going to harvest these, and we're going to use them this week. Mm -hmm. So first thing we're going to do is get out the ones that we froze earlier this week. Bag them up. And then we're just going to replace them with what we just harvested now. So you can see what I mean? Every little bit does add up because this is our second bag now of blueberries for this year. And I think we're gonna fill it and start on our third. Those ones are put away. And there's the next round. Minus a piece of grass. That's the one nice thing about using your own fruit that you've grown right on the homestead. You saw me there. We picked them and we took them straight from picking straight into the freezer. We didn't have to wash them or anything like that because we knew nothing had been put on them. So that is a wonderful thing. And the other thing that's wonderful about growing your own is I can eat them right out of the garden. August 5th, we are five days into the Every Bit Counts Challenge and we're just starting to ramp up. Now we finally got a break in the rain. So once again, we're out in the garden because that is kind of what this challenge is about for us is taking stuff from the garden, preserving it and getting it put away for winter. And you can see behind me, we are in an archway of beans, one of a couple that we are going to be tackling today. Although we're not going to be doing anything with those beans until next video. So you'll have to stay tuned to see what we make but we're gonna get them picked. And today we are also going to pick our cucumbers because they are going crazy and I need to make some pickles. So before we get going on the beans, we're going to tackle these cucumbers. You can see here beside me, this plant is a monster. It's actually about 12 plants really, but this year we changed to a new type of cucumber because we've never been successful at growing them. And I guess this year is the year. And of course, what didn't I plant? any dill so good thing we had preserved a lot of dill last year look at that i'm going to tell you a little bit about these so these are yellow lemon cucumbers and we came across these completely by fluke basically the people that we get our hay from for our livestock got these by accident in an osc package and grew them and they gave us a couple to try i uh, sorry the mosquitoes are crazy out here and we love them so of course what do we do we decide that's what we're going to grow and hopefully it grows. We've tried pickling cucumbers. Uh, what were the other ones? The straight eight cucumbers. We've done a whole bunch of different kinds of cucumbers and never had success. And I'm not going to bore you with the details of harvesting all these, but when I come back at the end, you're going to be amazed at how many are coming off of this for our first big harvest. And they're really firm. They look like they'd be going soft because this is how they normally look when they're really overripe. These are beautiful and firm. This is crazy, the number of them that are on here. And this is only our first harvest. There's quite a few that are not quite big enough. Look at, lots of little ones but still in coming. The coming days, they'll be ready. Oh my goodness. I didn't take the bucket and I ran out of arm space. That's how many cucumbers there are. 
All right, I had to stop picking because I think this is more cucumbers than I can use right at the moment and I don't want to waste anything and they aren't so good when they're not fresh when it comes to making these pickles. It's also starting to rain so we're going to abandon the beans for the moment and we're going to go in and get these cleaned up. We are back inside and it is time to get going on these pickles. I have weighed out 16 pounds. We brought in more than that but I think 16 pounds is about max that I can really process through into pickles in one day. Wonderful thing about pickles is they are super, super simple to make. I have a recipe where I just bung, oh, that's my jars. It always happens, right? Jars are ready. Give me one sec. The timer will keep singing unless I turn it off. All right, so jars are ready, as you now know, but we need to wash and cut up these pickles. Now, I guess they're cucumbers still, they're not pickles. Uh, this is something that's new to me. This is a new kind, as you know, and we've never actually made pickles out of them. So obviously when they're, here, I'll grab them. I haven't washed them yet, but so obviously when they're like a round circle like that, that's not going to work for pickling. So my plan is slice off the uh, stem, same way you would with regular pickles. You always want to cut off the flower and the stem, it says. So we got to cut the little flower and I'll take the stem off. And then I'm just going to, uh, probably eights, cut it into eights. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, we're going to give it a shot and see. I don't want them to go soggy or soft, which sometimes happens when you cut up pickles, right? So fingers crossed this is going to work. This is all an experiment. You guys are coming along for the ride. But first step, of course, is getting all the dirt off these and getting them cut up into the bowl so that we can then compile everything in the jars and pour our brine over. Now the brine, I've got it on the oven already. It is okay. Again, I'm making a huge batch here, right? But basically it's 50-50. So four cups of vinegar, four cups water. That's how I go. I've got 12 cups of vinegar in here and 12 cups of water. That's the most my uh, pot will actually hold. I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough for all of this. I've sterilized 12 jars. So we'll see what happens. So I'm in the middle of cutting and I thought I'd bring you back for just a brief update. Now, what happened is I've been doing them into pies, you know, the eight pieces like I'd mentioned. And I'm a bit concerned that they might be a little bit seedy for our family's tastes. So I've got a bucket full here that is all done that way. And now I'm cutting them into chunks. So we're going to have dill pickle chunks and dill pickle wedges. But the advantage to the chunks is I can cut out all the seed portion, uh, which I think in the long run may be desirable. So this is kind of going to be two ways of packing these and uh, we'll see in the end, after they've sat for a month or so and we open a container to test, uh, if uh, we like it better chunked or whether the seeds weren't a problem at all. Okay, guys, we are ready to put these all together in our jars. Our brine is just about to a full on boil. Like I said, half vinegar, half water. That's all we need. Everything else goes into each individual jar. And then we just pour that over top and into the water bath canner it goes. What you're gonna need for each jar, now I'm doing a bit of an odd one because they're kind of 750 mil jars, not a quart, not a pint, but all of them need to be processed for 15 minutes. But what I'm putting into my three quarter liter jars, gosh, it's hard to figure it out, is, let me get my recipe. <laughs> all right, my cheat sheet. I'm gonna just say it for the 500 mil jar, even though I'm putting in a little bit more for the 750 mil. So in every 500 ml jar, we're going to put half a tablespoon of pickling salt, one clove of garlic, a half a teaspoon of pickling spice, and a half head of dill. Now, as you saw out in the garden, I do not have dill, so we are using dried from the year previous. So what I'm going to do is a half teaspoon of dill weed in with a half teaspoon of dill seed. So... You guys can adjust that to whatever size jars you're going to be using. I'm going to adjust it to my 750 mil. And then we're going to put it in the water bath canner because whether it's pints or quarts, it is 15 minutes in the water bath canner. So let's get these put together. And on a total side note, my wonderful partner Chris is hard at work peeling up our garlic from last year because as you can see right now, I'm going to splice a clip of what our garlic looks like out in the garden right now. It needs to be picked. And we still have... 
I don't even know how much garlic it is. It's a box and a half anyways. It's a lot of garlic still left, about half of what we harvested last year. So we're gonna be turning that into garlic powder in the next few days, but we'll get it on the dehydrator tomorrow for every bit counts. So as you can see, I am reusing jars that I've managed to collect up from our honey over the uh, last couple years. I always had the intention of using them for pickles, just never had cucumbers to make pickles. <laughs> So I've got everything in there that I mentioned, but one thing that I did not mention was calcium chloride. Now, a lot of people are familiar with Pickle Crisp. That's a, a product that's, I don't know if it's Ball or Bernadine or, or who it is, but anyways, it's a granule that you can put into your pickles, in your brine, and it keeps them crispy and fresh tasting. And basically that is just granular calcium chloride. And lucky for me, calcium chloride is what I use in my feta cheese in order to keep it a nice firm cheese rather than going to a slimy ball. So I had it. So in each jar, I'm putting three eighths of a teaspoon of the calcium chloride. So if you have pickle fresh, I'm not sure how much you would need. You'd have to look at what the instructions are on the jar. But I'm just letting you know, this calcium chloride is basically the same thing. You can buy this at any cheese making store. So I could only get eight jars in my canner because these ones are a little bit bigger. So we're going to have to come back for round two on these pickles tomorrow and do another batch because I still have quite a few left in the bowl. I still have some that are cut up. So there's even more out there that we could pick. So as long as this goes well and is successful, tomorrow we'll make a couple more jars. Well, Chris has been hard at work while I've been doing the pickles and he has almost a full bucket here of our bowl of garlic peeled up. So we're going to get it cleaned up and tomorrow we will uh, show you how we get this processed and ready to go into the dehydrator because we're making garlic powder and we're making a lot of it. All right, so last night ran a little late. By the time we ate dinner, I just basically got the rest of those cucumbers packed up and into the jars ready for today for canning. But we did get eight jars and as you can see, they sealed up beautifully, even reusing those old honey jars. So it does pay sometimes to hang on to those. I find I can get sort of four or five uses out of them as long as that lid doesn't get damaged because those don't work with the standard size lids. So I only get the life that I get out of the lid, unfortunately, but at least we're reusing a little bit. But I've got my brine almost back up to boil here. We just left that sitting for the night. I've got my jars packed and ready to go. I'm only doing four because while well, four is all I had left of the same kind of jars, which I liked, Plus, I actually ran out of pickling spice, so that's going to be added to our grocery haul list. Although, I did look at Walmart the other day, and they didn't have any, and neither did Superstore. So, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to buy that pickling spice, but maybe I'll just have to make it up from scratch. We'll see. So, let's get these pickles in their brine and into the water bath canner, because again, they need to go for 15 minutes. And then, I'll have 12 jars of pickles, which is pretty darn good, considering I am rubbish at uh, growing <laughs> cucumbers. All right, so we got those four jars of pickles all finished up and done. And like I mentioned yesterday, we have beans that we need to pick out in the garden and a few other things for a recipe we're going to be working on for the next video. But what we need to first do is go back and check on the blackberries because I do think they are ready and or at least some of them are ready and I don't want to miss out on them. And today's actually cool. It's only 23 degrees Celsius, which means it's actually sweater weather, which means the mosquitoes won't be so bad. Yay! <laughs> so let's go back and take a look at the blackberries. So for collecting blackberries, we're actually heading back to the mid area of our property, back in the sheep pastures. Back here is loaded with blackberries. There's acres and acres of wild blackberries. So we're leaving the sheep behind because I do not need their help. And we're going to go see what is ready to go. It really is quite the jungle back here. We haven't had the sheep out in this section, but look at the apple trees. Tons of apples on that one. Even over there, look. It's gonna be a great apple harvest this fall. Whoa, low flying plane, holy cow. Very low. But what I was really wanting to show you here was we're gonna be walking past this section for now because I really want to go to the big section, but look in there. Look at the berries. 
and it's all over. Oh my gosh, the mosquitoes are horrific. So I'm back in the section that last year was unbelievably amazing in production. And it really looks slim pickings this year. So I'm going to see what I can do and whew, trailblaze in here. I'm not going to take the camera because between the bugs and everything else, it's just going to be a hassle. No offense. Because <laughs> it's going to be awkward to try and uh, wash bugs and pick berries and hold buckets and hold camera. But I'm going to see what I can find in here. And if I get anything of excitement, I will bring you guys back. Otherwise, we're going to be going back to that first patch that I showed you because it was looking a lot more full of berries than this one is. So wish me luck. There are a few decent little sections in this little bush or cluster of bushes here, but definitely nothing like last year. So far, my bucket is meh, almost half full. Now, nah, let's be honest, it's a third full. And the mosquitoes are horrible. All right, so the mosquitoes won back there. They're not much better up here. I got about three quarters of a container at the back one, and now I'm up at that one that we went by at the beginning, and it's looking lush. But I may only fill this one container because I'm getting eaten alive. This is crazy. But it's still something and every bit does count. Super excited for apple season. I'm hearing them falling all around me as I'm out here picking berries. Every single tree, they're losing them like crazy. All right, so the mosquitoes got the best of me. This was about an hour's worth of picking. I will say the berries are a little bit more sparse this year than they were last year. So it was a lot of kind of walking. Oh, let's see, there's a mosquito right in my eye. Anyways, it was a lot of walking around to find the berries to pick. But we're also, it's, it's weird because we miss some and yet we seem really early for most of them. So I'm sure we'll still get more, but this is a good start. We're gonna get these into the freezer the way we normally do with the flash freeze and get them on a cookie sheet in there. And that's a good start for this year. That'll fill almost a bag. And now we're gonna harvest what we need for tomorrow's recipe. All right, so my starving cat once again is making his sound effects well known in our videos. But for this recipe coming up in our next video, we need zucchini or summer squash and beans. So we're going to check how many summer squash we have because that's going to determine how many beans I need to pick. So we ended up with 11. Some of them are smaller, not quite a double batch in my opinion. So I think we're just going to stick with picking our 12 cups or roughly 12 cups of beans. All right, so we need 12 cups of beans. So we're just going to take a mixture of our green and yellow pole beans. Isn't this beautiful? I love archways of beans. It's just magical. You're catching me snacking. Nothing like fresh beans, right? But it looks like that's all I'm going to fit in my container. I think it's pretty close to 12 cups, a mixture of the yellow and the green. But as you can see on the vines here, there is so much still to pick. So I think we're going to have to probably plunge ahead with freezing some of these because a lot of the other stuff in the garden just isn't ready for some of my other recipes. So bonus, while I was out harvesting the blackberries, Chris harvested some more of our blueberries from our little patch behind the house here. So that's going to be added to the freezer as well as my one and a half buckets here. So I guess it's probably about three liters. We're just gonna do what we usually do. Spread it out on the thing. Gotta get the stems that I uh, accidentally left on. There we go, very nice. Nice full tray. The nice thing is each full tray fills one of these Ziploc bags. So we have a lot of Ziploc bags of fruit. And you can see here, we have some blueberries and raspberries that need to go into packages as well in here already. I admit, I love these silicone ones for this because the stuff just doesn't stick. Watch, look at all off. I leave it in here so that it doesn't get wet. I'm gonna seal that one up. I'll just put the blueberries in there for now. And we're on to another bag of blueberries in the freezer. This is our third bag now from our little patch this year. The blueberries are pumping. About a quarter of the way. All right, so that is it for the freezer for day four, five, and six. We put away quite a bit of fruit again. One thing that we didn't get into in any intense way was dehydrating this couple days, but don't worry, we're gonna step that up because as you saw, 
We started working on that garlic last night, but we didn't get it all finished. And today I focused it on berries. So it's still all sitting in the bucket. So that's going to be our first task tomorrow, as well as coming back to those beans and squash we picked to surprise you with what we're going to be making as well in day seven, eight, nine, which is coming up next.